President Biden traveling to Maine this, this hour. He's going to continue touting his economic agenda, or Bidenomics, as the White House is now embracing it. Uh, this with the GDP numbers yesterday topping expectations at 2.4 percent. But the Federal Reserve still fighting inflation by hiking the interest rate this week again to the highest level in more than 20 years. The central bank also saying, though it is no longer expecting a recession, but hinting at race, interest rates, rate hikes to come. Joining me now is the top economic advisor to President Obama, Leo Brannard. She's also the former vice chair of the Federal Reserve and a former top Treasury official. It's so good to have you on the program. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, first, I want to ask you about what your read is on the Fed's actions, the additional rate hikes that could be coming down the pike, and whether you're afraid that that might, you know, tip us over now that, for the first time, more economists are saying we may avoid the recession and have that long sought after and very rare soft landing. Well, certainly the data that we've gotten uh, yesterday and today is very consistent with a story that growth is up and inflation is down. And so if you uh, look at inflation, it's down to 3 percent. Uh, it's the lowest it's been uh, since March of 2021. Uh, and growth uh, was reported yesterday to be 2.4 percent, uh, also uh, beating expectations. So that combination, I think, uh, is very encouraging. Do you think that the Fed is outdated in still trying to achieve a 2 percent inflation rate? Given productivity and other factors, do you think that um, they should, you know, set off what they've got? The wage numbers are still high, but job growth is important, and you want to avoid a recession. Yeah, you know, I think I don't uh, want to second guess. Uh, that's an independent institution. Um, but what I can say is we have now seen unemployment below 4% uh, for the longest stretch since uh, in 50 years at a time when inflation has actually come down uh, very significantly to 3% uh, today. Uh, and that means um, that Americans uh, are seeing greater job opportunities. We're seeing more Americans going back into the labor force, so participation has uh, increased a great deal, uh, is at a 20-year high, uh, which is also very positive. And you can see that in uh, consumer sentiment, which is also the uh, best we've seen in about two years. So generally, I think you see a picture where we are growing the economy, bringing costs down for Americans. That's what the president really has been emphasizing. Uh, and uh, I think we're pleased to see that, and American consumers seem to be pleased to see it as well. Larry Summers, who of course had top jobs in the uh, previous administrations and as a former Treasury Secretary to Bill Clinton, is again uh, criticizing President Biden's economic agenda, specifically uh, what he calls manufacturing centered economic nationalism. He's talking about trade policy and antitrust policy and the like. Um, let me play some of what he just said. I am profoundly concerned by the doctrine of manufacturing centers economic nationalism that is increasingly being put forth as a general principle. He's also questioning whether the, that, that policy will lead to higher standards, higher incomes and standards of living. Um, your response? Uh, so I, I, he, I don't know uh, what doctrine he's referring to. I do know that the president has an investing in America agenda. He's up in Maine to celebrate that today. Uh, when we saw the growth figures yesterday, we saw the highest investment, private sector investment in factory construction in 40 years. Uh, and we know that the emphasis on infrastructure where the U.S. had lagged for a long period of time. That's roads, bridges, ports, clean drinking water, high speed internet access is uh, an area that boosts productivity across the board and we're making big strides there that Americans uh, can see in their everyday lives. Uh, we also know that it's really important to see a transition um, to clean energy 
and uh, the incentives that the president passed in his historic legislation are leading to investments in clean energy, uh, clean uh, car technologies all over the country. Those are not only good for jobs, but they're also vital uh, in terms of the future orientation uh, of our manufacturing sector. Do you have any concerns about some of the, um, the complaints from China about our sanctions, lifting some sanctions? Obviously, they're upset about chips and other things. Uh, as their economy slows, which would affect global growth as well, potentially. Yeah, so we have uh, been very focused on making sure that we continue to embrace uh, the benefits uh, that we get. We've got a huge amount of investment in American manufacturing uh, that is actually coming from our foreign partners. Um, and so we maintain a very open economy. Um, we did learn during the pandemic uh, that supply chain disruptions led to shortages and price spikes for American consumers. And so the president has been very focused on making sure we have more resilient supply chains and so have businesses. Uh, and as a result, we are actually seeing inflation coming down. That kind of supply chain resilience means diversification. It doesn't mean decoupling. And it just means a more resilient economy with lower inflation over time for the American consumer and worker. Well, Leo Brannard, again, it's a pleasure. Uh, I think this is the first time I've had the privilege of interviewing you in your new job. So thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you very much.